What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Yesterday, Capcom had a day. They announced a remaster for a game from 2006, as absolute classic, and when they showed it off, it actually looks a bit more robust than what I was envisioning. We'll go over that here today. Also, Capcom did announce some pretty big classic Resident Evil games coming up to a, a modern platform with it. An interesting partnership, actually. And then we have Nintendo, of course, seeing controversy once again. This one having to do with a, a certain release that they announced and, of course, the pricing. So if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And of course, members for the channel do get Newswave early. If you'd like to learn more about that, click the join button down below this video. And we're going to start today with a, a patent from Sony that at least outlines an interesting idea and one that I, I'm kind of curious how exactly it would actually shake out here, which we can see this is posted up. This is over on Xputer. So they do have some diagrams for this uh, saying, new Sony controller may let you draw your own buttons using conductive ink. Again, this is a patent and this kind of reads as one that's sort of like pie in the sky, wishful thinking as like, oh wow, wouldn't this be awesome? Let's patent it just in case. And yeah, it, it does indeed describe the idea of customizing your controller's button layout when it comes to spacing of the buttons, and its position, shape, all using electrical ink. They also outline something called anti-fatigue buttons, so you can modify how those standard buttons will work. So rather than having to press and hold, you can just press it once, and then the system will just assume it's, it's still being held down, right? And to me, this more or less plays off of their access controller, one that would work uh, to basically mold itself into different ways for uh, anyone who would have disabilities when they're trying to play games or certain needs there. And I kind of think this is just something that they had in mind going alongside of that development. I don't know if it'll ever actually come out, but uh, it at least shows some insight into some of the wacky ideas that these companies come up with. Drawing your own controller with electrical ink, that would be That'd be an interesting experience. Also, we did have games announced for PlayStation Plus Essential in July, which we can see this is over on PlayStation Blog. They have Borderlands 3, that's for the PS5, PS4, NHL 24 on the PS5 and the PS4, and then Among Us on the PS5 and PS4. These all go live July 2nd, so next week. And they also outline what looks like Genshin Impact PlayStation Plus pack. As far as I can tell, these are just sort of in-game rewards and bonuses here. If you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber, you'll be able to claim. So that there you go. That says it'll become available on July 16th. Now, looking at the lineup of titles, I guess Borderlands 3 would be the big one, but I know we just had the Stanley Cup Finals wrap-up, so maybe people are interested in playing a hockey game. You have NHL 24 at your disposal there. Among Us is a cheaper game, but if you've been curious about it also becoming available there, we'll probably just work to have a bit of a surge for players for that game. So, not too bad overall for Essential. Borderlands 3 is probably the one I'd gravitate here, though, out of the three titles. Oh, and check this out. We had an update for Elden Ring, as it appears from Soft, uh, heard some of the complaints around the game's difficulty. Specifically, I think in the balancing and like the ramp up of uh, powering up really in this uh, in this new DLC, as it's not through just typical leveling, you actually get power up items in the game as you explore, and those will make you a bit stronger, whether it's your character or even your summons against different bosses or just enemies in the world that can uh, just about one shot you at times. And we can see this over on their website. Now this is calibration update 112.2. They have the change list here. The big one people were looking towards is the attack and damage negation has been increased for the first half of maximum amount of blessing enhancements. The second half will now be more gradual. So as you're going around picking up your first uh, few, you will actually become substantially more powerful and then it will sort of level off as you get towards the second half uh, of your pickups. And again, this is obviously just reaction to how people were feeling around this DLC, especially early on in the game. As you get a little further and you find more of these, I did notice I, I was doing a bit better against these different bosses and I have been slowly working my way through a number of them now, but it seems like I still have a ways to go and 
from what I'm seeing with this final boss, it's, uh, it's gonna be quite a challenge to bring them down even with all the power-ups at your disposal. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Capcom who made several announcements yesterday. The big one though, the one that I was really excited for has to do with Dead Rising from 2006. Early adopters of the Xbox 360 back in the day when it launched, I'm sure has very fond memories of this game because for some, this may have felt like one of the real big next generation leaps for that generation as there was a lot going on this in this game, but it also felt very, very unique compared to anything else we had experienced even dating back to the previous generation, which once again, very, very creative time between the PS2, the GameCube, and the Xbox, but we can see this trailer that was posted up by Capcom kind of out of nowhere, actually. And you can see Dead Rising Deluxe Remastered. This is their teaser trailer for it. And of course, going with that title, they have DR DR. So it, I, sure, I guess it'll work out for the, the logo here. But as you go through the trailer, they do say it's coming to the newest generation of platforms. So we can assume PS5, Xbox Series, PC, and... Uh, maybe Switch 2. Say it's an updated release with a brand new look. And when I first got the press release, I saw it on my phone pop up and it's like through email as I'm on a lot of these press lists for these different companies. And it came up as like Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. And I was like, uh, okay, I get, maybe it's like a PS5 and an Xbox series version specifically. And they have like little bits of extra content or just something like that. Oh, it takes advantage of the faster load times. I, that's was kind of coming to mind. But then I look at the trailer, Frank West, Looks like you got a pretty serious upgrade, so much so that I don't, I don't know, does this, does this look like a remaster necessarily to me? This looks more like a remake, but I, I guess you could think about it this way with Capcom. They look at something like the Resident Evil titles, like, like two, three, four, the ones they've done recently, where they reimagine certain parts. Maybe they look at that as more of a remake, and even though they could be changing a lot of the visuals and stuff dramatically, they might still look at that as a remaster because they'd be sticking closer to the original title. That said, this seems to be a pretty good opportunity to kind of rework some of the more aggravating parts, I guess you could say, of the original Dead Rising. All I mentioned was a very unique experience. There were parts of it that I'm sure put a lot of people off at the time and they might still do that. Like the timer, like 72 hours, I think it was like every five or six minute an hour would pass and uh, you would be able to miss certain things in the game. But the idea was you would go back through multiple times as Frank West, you would level up your character, you'd get stronger, you'd gain new abilities, and it was sort of like a, yeah, I guess it was kind of a roguelike, like a longer one, obviously, because these weren't bite-sized runs. You would legitimately go through it for hours at a time. Now you could like quit out and then go back through the run and keep your uh, experience points. I forget exactly what they called them then, but it, it the other thing that was really cool about it that always stuck out to me is your Frank West dropping into a mole full of zombies that would tear you apart, but they never took it seriously. It was very tongue in cheek the whole time, whether you would have a bowling ball and literally knock down zombies like they were pins or you pick up big hedge clippers and chop them in half rapidly. You have a katana that I thought was awesome. You'd just be slicing them up or you could just become Mega Man and have like a blaster and a helmet and stuff. It was a lot of fun. And that's something that I think a lot of people really got a kick out of. And I, I'm excited to see what they do with this remaster, which again, looks more like a remake. Will they play around with that time limit? Will they add in some new content, maybe for extra bits and pieces of the story? It's hard to say, but I'm certainly keeping an eye on this one as they have lined it up for 2024 apparently. So fun random announcement from Capcom and something tells me we're probably just, I guess, a few months away from it coming out. So we'll keep an eye out for it. Next up, let's talk about controversy that's hit one of Nintendo's new upcoming releases and that being Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. And no, the controversy is actually not about Forever Entertainment being the studio developing it as they have not had the best quality releases in the past. Either way, Nintendo seems to be contracting them for this. Maybe it was a cheaper contract that they came up with and that's why it's Forever Entertainment doing it. But nonetheless, it is coming out in January and the pricing was revealed, which has not gone over great on the internet. Go figure, right? Well, let me know what you think about this one because we can see the, the page for it over on Nintendo's website, their storefront. It's coming in at $59.99, so, okay, here's the thing with this. 
is this full price still for Nintendo? Because while we were looking at 60 and we're like, wow, it really is the full, I mean, full price now is 70 for Nintendo, right? I mean, they did that with, with, uh, with Tears of the Kingdom. So, hey, this is cheaper than full, okay, yeah, obviously the, the trending price point for Nintendo this entire time, the typical one at full price, I think consider it, has been 60. Now they are, of course, moving to Nintendo's new system, which, I mean, this is coming out in January, 2025. I would hope we know something about the new system by then. I mean, they said themselves, they will reveal it within this fiscal year, which ends March 30, uh, 30th, uh, 2025. So, I mean, they won't exactly have too long, say if they even wait up to this point. And yeah, $60 might be a, a budget-minded price point for them, similar to how Sony is sort of pricing Astrobot. Although that's a new game. This is a remaster. I mean, it's HD, right? Remaster remake of a Wii title that when it came out was $50. That also went on to sell six and a half million copies. And I don't think this was ever really going to sell that anyway, because it's technically a re-release of that game. And while I think it'll still do fairly well, Nintendo probably looking at this with inflation in mind and well, them being, I'm sure, uh, overconfident we'll say with the whole situation with the way the Switch has gone and the growth of their intellectual properties, Nintendo probably just thinks they can, just, they can just do it if they want. And that's just the way it is. And I mean, they could be right on this one. We'll, we'll find out when it releases because to me, if this is coming in at that $60 price point, there's gonna be a lot of scrutiny on forever and how well this port actually comes out. Like the, the quality of it, that's going under the microscope immediately when it releases Digital Foundry. I'm sure we'll be looking at it, but then also just the internet as a whole, because Twitter has already been doing that. Now they see the $60 price tag and you're putting Forever Entertainment in a precarious position here. But I mean, the game itself is quality. Is it full price $60 quality compared to when it released on the Wii at $50? That's going to be up to, well, the market. And that's the biggest thing here is the free market will decide if this game should or shouldn't have been $60, then maybe Nintendo will act accordingly. For me, I, I've i played this game on the Wii, and then I remember I got it on the 3DS, and now here it is again, this time more expensive. I think I'm good on this one, especially since at the time it's coming out, I'm hoping we'll be talking about Nintendo's next generation device and maybe next generation games to look forward to. So it might be that weird in-between time period for it, which is also one of the reasons I feel like it would be better off for it to be priced similar to what they did with Metroid Prime Remastered, which was an awesome release. And that one came in at 40? Uh, interesting strategy here for Nintendo, but I guess... We'll, we'll see how it goes for them as we get a few weeks into 2025. Next up, let's go back to Capcom here as they made a joint announcement with GOG, which is the storefront on PC that is owned by CD Projekt. And it appears we have some classic Resident Evil games coming up and releasing for the PC through GOG specifically. And there were some questions as to why just GOG? Well, they actually explain that perfectly fine in the description for these games, which we'll start here though with the press release that they sent out and also posted up over on their website. They say, in joint efforts with the original creators, Capcom, we're thrilled to announce the re-release of the original Resident Evil, the groundbreaking series that heralded the golden age of the survival horror genre. They also go on to announce that both Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 Nemesis are releasing later on. So uh, that's pretty cool. We'll have all three of them coming out. We look over on the store page for Resident Evil 1. It is up at $9.99. They also are selling a bundle of all three at $24.99. And I mean, you can go ahead and buy that technically and I guess save money if they're all gonna be $10 each, save $5. I'd still like to see how they turn out right when they release, but I mean, you can decide what you wanna do there. However, there are some very intriguing aspects to this. One, it is fully compatible as they describe here on the store page with Windows 10 and Windows 11. All four localization of the game are included, English, German, French, Japanese. They have improved DirectX game renderer. They have new rendering options, improved timing of the cutscenes, improved game video player. Uh, really, it's just set up to work well 
on modern systems, modern PCs with the uh, Windows 10, 11, all that. They also mention their version of the game keeps all the original content intact. 1996 description is no exception. Take a trip down memory lane and see how Resident Evil was described to gamers when it launched all those years ago, completely uncut, even more blood, graphic violence, and gory scenes than the worldwide Monster Hit version on PlayStation. And if you look down at the system requirements, well, I mean, if you're watching this YouTube video right now on a PC, congratulations, you can run Resident Evil that's up on GOG right now. But there were questions as to why this is just on GOG. Well, fine print at the bottom underneath DualSense Edge, not supported by the way, this re-release version of the game was co-developed by GOG. That's right. They got together with Capcom and apparently made a push so much so that they wanted to co-develop these ports to PC and release on their platform. Again, GOG being owned wholly by CD Projekt, it sort of makes sense there. And the, the nice thing here about GOG is when you buy a game from them on PC, you can play it offline. DRM free. I know it sounds crazy, right? But it, it is a nice aspect to GOG and then taking these sorts of games that I, this is probably the best version you're going to get at all on PC, even above emulation if it is fully uncut and all these extra bits and pieces to make it fully compatible with modern builds. So we'll... We'll see how it does though on GOG as the other versions arrive, but really cool stuff here for Resident Evil fans. Although I guess the unfortunate part is, yes, you will have to play it on PC. Good news is though, uh, pretty much everyone in existence now that was sold in the last 10 years should be able to play it, no problem. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Xbox Keystone, which was going to be Microsoft's attempt to have a very small streaming box they could sell at a very, very affordable price. Unfortunately, it's something that was shelved and it appears to be because of the cost factor surrounding it. And remember, this is sort of being talked about during like the pandemic situation where costs were on the rise just in general for raw materials and we haven't seen a price reduction at all for consoles. In fact, we've gone the wrong way with console prices. That's something I've wanted to talk about here for a bit. Maybe I will make a separate video for that one, but we now have some images of Keystone through way of patents. And you can see this is posted up over on Windows Central as they outline some of this. You can see on the front here, we do have a USB type A port on the right side. We have the power button there on the left side, all the way around on the side of the little system, it appears to be a sync button for your wireless controllers. On the top, it has the same kind of speaker grill looking design as the Xbox series. Uh, S. And then on the back, we have Ethernet, HDMI, power input. On the bottom, they have that sort of circular disc stand that is from the Xbox Series X. And they also have that hello from Seattle sort of writing there. And it looks like about what I expected, a very, very small combination of the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. I mean, if you just look at like the power or the ethernet port and just extrapolate the size from those ports to the rest of the system, this was gonna be very, very small. The only issue here is, as was mentioned by Phil Spencer, the pricing just didn't make sense. They seem to want to try to ship this thing with a controller. It's around $100 to $130. I feel like they were between $150 to $200 when the math actually added up, right? They're oh, okay, well, why would we do that? What if this thing had to come in at like $180 with a controller? The Xbox Series S is consistently on sale for... 250 sometimes less than that sometimes you see a series s for a while they're for like 220 size 200 so then the this uh this keystone wouldn't have made sense the thing i would have been curious about is what letter they would have gone with we have an xbox series s we have an xbox series x maybe the, they would have gone with an xbox series e and just rolled the dice on how the retailers would have lined that one up. But uh, that's the only thing I, I'm really interested in would have been the naming because going into next generation, that's the big question mark I think many of us have is how are they gonna do the branding? Is it still gonna be Xbox series? Are they gonna drop that completely and just call it Xbox? Hard to say, but yeah, there you go. We have our official look at what Keystone would have been through way of these patents. And before we go to the comments of the day, we'll take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday where I ask, have you played the first Dead Rising? 60% say no. Okay, 40% say yes. I, the game has been re-released like multiple times now. So you can find it fairly easily now on modern platforms, but it's still very much the same kind of game that released in 2006. I'm curious if Capcom 
changes a few things here, or if they do try to stick as much as they can to that original formula, because while people didn't like the, the clock necessarily, I thought it made sense, and I thought it was actually one of the biggest differentiating factors of that entire game, so it might have to stay in there, but maybe they have it as an optional thing. Maybe there's an unlockable mode that you get further in where you can just turn it off completely and explore as much as you want, and that's sort of how they kind of have best of both worlds. You can have a mode that's exploration based or you can have one that is just normal and you go through the game as you did back in 2006, probably with refined controls and what seems to be better visuals. And we'll finish up with the comments of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Shinobi who says, platform holders better pay attention to what is happening to Apple App Store. If they go all digital, governments may force them to open up the platform to other storefronts. Physical games is a better solution for them to keep. You know, I must wonder if that's one of the reasons Phil Spencer was talking about Steam being on Xbox, almost to get out in front of that a, a bit. Because, all right, so let's say in the far future, I'm talking 20 years from now, there really is just one console. Let's just say for the sake of things, the way that the market has gone between Xbox and PlayStation, it's PlayStation. And like Xbox is more or less digital based. Nintendo's still out there somewhere. They're doing Nintendo things, uh, but it's just PlayStation. Well, at that point, regulars may look at this and say, well, you control everything. There's no more physical games left in stores for competition when it comes to pricing. You control everything. So now we have to open up your platform and we can have an Xbox store on the PlayStation. You have a Nintendo store on the PlayStation. You can have an EA store, a Ubisoft store, and then it turns into a whole thing with launchers all over the place. Is that really one, what these platform holders want? I don't think so, but uh, it does make you wonder if just by default, we may end up there the way the market is trending. And like I said, who knows what gaming is going to even look like 10, 20, 30 years from now. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Well, there's Dead Rising getting a remaster. Remaster. Out of nowhere being announced by Capcom yesterday. Are you excited to pick that one apparently later on this year? And then also, what about these Resident Evil games being brought up and modernized for current PCs. Are you picking up the first one from GOG or are you hanging out waiting maybe for that triple pack and getting all three? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.